If you guys are wondering why we don't have a chicken coop anymore. <sighs> Hi guys, welcome back to Bok Bok Bouquet. This is Ricardo. And this is Kelly. And if you guys have noticed in our last few videos, uh, we've been showing our chicken run here. And if you notice, we don't have a chicken coop anymore. Even though um, a couple years ago, we did a whole video on our how we built our own chicken coop in seven days with no experience, but. It's coming up on its two year anniversary and I wish it was still here. We, we were devastated. So many tears were shed and you know, when it rains, it pours. So we we wanted to like let you guys know about what's been going on and now it's finally time we have time to film this video and answer any questions that you may have and let's get into it yeah well um it just happened one of those nights that i was putting the chickens up by myself and it was already after like sundown that's usually when we collect all of our eggs just once a day instead of multiple times throughout the day because chickens lay at all times throughout the day. It's just our habit. We so, just do once a day yep, at night. Collection. It'll usually be around 8 p.m. Sun's down. I come around with the basket, collect the eggs, and a lot of times we do it together. But that night I was doing it by myself. I'm opening the, the nesting box lid and I, she thinks it's funny, but I'm always afraid to find a snake in a nest box even though it may not happen here where we live. But... I'm oh, still it's always... happened to me all growing up. Yeah, see, yeah. it's happened to her before, so I'm always afraid of like lifting that thing and seeing some sort of garden <laughs> snake eating our eggs. So, um, because I was by myself, I actually turned on the flashlight from my phone in it, and then I saw a couple of little bugs, and I was like, oh shoot, like, what are these? So then immediately I went inside and I got Kelly and I said, hey, you gotta come out here and like, there's some bugs crawling around our coop. Let me tell you right away, I knew it was not a mite or a lice, which we do have a video on right here. We knew this was something different. I thought it looked like a tick, but it didn't look like a dog or a deer tick, the ones you traditionally see. This looked different. So I Googled bird tick, fowl tick, and it turns out there is such a thing. Even though there wasn't much online, there was it, it took her a while to find anything. On it. Apparently this is super rare, and of course we're the lucky lottery ticket winners to get it. Um, relatively new to North America is what I've read and this fowl tick doesn't really act like a tick it doesn't stay on the bird's body and engorge itself they come out and act like mites they come out at night and then they feast and then all during the day to hide from the sun they hide in all the little nooks and crannies so it kind of acts like a mite but it's a tick the babies the little tiny babies that just hatch out of the eggs they will actually live on the chicken's body for 10 days and then they fall off they molt they shed their skin and go into their next stage of life and then they hide in the coop and then they will only only feed at night at that point so we shine a flashlight around and that's when we could see it was like a horror movie they were coming out at night and we got a little putty knife like one of those scraper little um, paint scrapers and I shoved it in between some trim of the coop and it was like a scary movie blood started pouring out because we squished the tick we found when we squish it and blood burst everywhere and these disgusting things we're feeding on our babies and that just makes me sick to think about like how we are very lucky we did not lose any birds to this i i read online that they can kill your birds and what really bothered me about these foul ticks is there was little to no information on the web about it and some of the information we found due to our own little testing to be false and I'm going to link the article that I found online that ended up being my Bible in the description below and that is what really helped us if you were going through this. We're going to we're going to tell you everything we did to get rid of it in this video, but I'll also link that really good article because a lot of the information like I said was false. So the first thing we did is I gathered some of these ticks in a shot glass and we tried Elector PSP, which I had read does kill the foul ticks and this tick swam in a whole little thing of Electra PSP overnight. It did not kill it. So what I read in this article is Orange Guard kills anthropods, which is the spider family. Foul ticks, ticks are in the spider family. So we went to our Ace Hardware store. We got ourselves that Orange Guard and yep, it kills the foul ticks. Orange Guard, we completely soaked everything we could, sprayed everything with the Orange Guard. And we, we, we soaked our run, our coop, anything we could find. But the problem was, is the ticks hide in the nooks and crannies. So as much as we could spray in there, when we started taking our coop apart piece by piece, there was just so many ticks deep inside there that we had to 
we had to like manually take it apart and spray it and <laughs> yeah if you're wondering well if you killed them all why did you get rid of your coop it's just like it was an insane amount of ticks like anywhere you think oh, like it, it was it was incredible the amount of ticks that were hiding like underneath all, all of the our eggs studs they lay because the mothers will even like in the screw them. holes like little eggs were laid in and i mean it was oh. thousands and thousands of them where at first i said well let's start unhinging the doors we'll spray that kill them but then just the more that we uncovered it was just so much more and it was under our floorboard it was just everywhere and i did not even want to salvage it the I never, I never thought we would get rid of our coop. I thought if we ever move and we want a new coop, we'd sell it. But it was just so infested with them that it, there was just no salvaging it. And as bad as I felt, I said, well, we're going to get rid of it. We're going to dump it out a piece at a time. And because I built coops, I said, I'll just build us a brand new one from scratch. And it'll actually be even smaller so that we can have more space in our run in there. And uh, so, yeah, I didn't want to get rid of our coop, but... I told her, well, we could just rebuild a brand new one. And it, it was, was just so big. far, it was just and so far gone. It was just insane. Yeah, it, I understand why online the top advice was to burn your coop. We live in Southern California. This is a fire country. Uh, we can, you're not allowed to even have a burn pile or a little fire pit in your yard here. That wasn't an option for us. So we had to soak every single little piece of wood in the orange guard. And we like the orange guard because it's pet safe. It's an orange peel extract and that happens to kill anthropologists pods and we soaked everything threw it in the dumpster because we can't burn things and we actually ran out of the orange guard and the ace hardware store was closed and as we were dismantling our coop we just ran down the street and we ended up getting some flea and tick raid which we only used because we were throwing it away i would not use that around your animals that is not pet safe so we only put that on the things that were being thrown away so besides orange guard the other thing that can kill the flea ticks is I do not know how to say this, so you can, don't attack me in the comments. Per, permithrin? I'll write it right here. Permithrin. This ended up killing the, the ticks, killing the eggs. Save, you, can, you can actually spray it on your birds too, but because only the babies live on, on the birds and then they drop off when they go in their no life cycle, we didn't end up dipping or spraying our birds. We just like treated the, the coop in the run area. And it actually lasts for an amount of time. So when the little babies do fall off, the birds, they'll eventually walk over something that was coated in either whatever you use, permethrin or the orange guard, and it will kill them at that time. So, well, then plus, we didn't find any on our birds. Like, we would, we well, would inspect them, and th there weren't the, many first, on the birds. When we first checked, they, they, we saw little babies under our little Millie's wing, and it, oh, poor little thing. I pulled a couple out with um, tweezers, and it was... It was just too many to deal with, so we just waited for them to drop off. And after we had treated everything, we found no more ticks anywhere, no more babies on our birds' armpits. We just wanted to keep up once a week with the spring, just in case any new eggs we had missed hatched and the little ticks gone there. Luckily, we haven't seen a tick since. Uh, we're filming this video, what has it been, like a month since this happened to us? We're filming this like a, a little later so we know that the ticks are gone and I'm kind of glad we're filming a little later otherwise I'd probably be crying right now because and Well that's why so I'm not I'm not rushing to build a new one either cuz <sighs> I didn't want you know have a fresh brand new coop and then them just kind of repopulating in here so we're just making sure that they're all gone for good. It's yeah. summer here it, we get triple digits in our temperatures right now in the summer so uh we have our shade cloths so that maintains pretty cool but at night these guys aren't going to be like freezing to death or anything by any means. So for now, they've been roosting up here at night. We got those roost bars right there. Yeah. And then these guys are actually in what we call baby prison because they're broody and we're trying to snap them out of it. These two girls have been trying to go broody on some eggs that are probably not even fertile. But we, we don't want them to be broody right now. So we've been And when the foul ticks were, were plaguing us, I feel so bad. Our broodies were the most affected. They were just in there yeah. with those ticks. When we removed our nesting material and saw the number of the ticks in there, it was disgusting. Our first clue. So we saw it looked like black plant splatter on our trim, our white trim. And I thought he had been painting somebody's chicken coop and it was a windy day <laughs> and he was painting a black coop. And I thought, hey, you got paint on our coop. He's like, no, I didn't. And I'm she like, wouldn't believe yes, me. She did. thought I was lying. And I, for like a week, I thought, oh, he got black paint on there. And then I went with a brush and it just brushed off, dusted off. That was dried flea. Or coop maybe or something? Not flea. Tick. Foul tick. tick. Feces, which is blood. Ugh. 
So yeah, we saw like these little specks, but we were just really confused uh. on what it was. So that's before we actually saw the ticks. That was the first sign. Because it was that in the was daytime. The it was in the daytime, but we yeah. were like, well, what is creating this? It didn't look like mold. It's similar, but I was like, it's not mold. But it was just kind of on the outside of our coop even. And it was like these little black stains and mm -hmm. we were just really confused. But eventually, like I said, when I shined a light on at night, and it was probably like 10 p.m. when we would come out here and check them, they were just everywhere. If you shine your flashlight on them, they were just out. It was pretty crazy, yeah. But in the daytime, you come out here and look, and everything would look like there was nothing ever there. But you know, in our coop, it, they were just everywhere at we night. We had to treat every single piece so they like they would anything where anything touches anything. They were in between everything. Even here in our baby prison, they were like under here and here. We had to soak every single thing we owned in here and and it, it got rid of them but our problem is is that these foul ticks are supposed to be more common in these areas like where we live southern california arizona new mexico texas that's where i read online it's more prone to these dry they love dry hot climates and supposedly i couldn't find the exact temperature they do not tolerate a frost so cold temperature supposedly kills these foul ticks i don't know the exact temperature cannot find any research on it but we weren't about to wait for winter to get Get rid of these things and because this has happened to us i think we're going to preventatively treat our run and our coop every year with a permethrin spray every spring just to prevent this because now that i know that it's here in our area i never want this to happen again like literally every night we were we were suiting up like the cdc the, to come in here we would get undressed outside and hop in the shower it was crazy town here we were all goggled up beanies things gloves the, it was it was it was crazy we were yeah because we don't want any ticks night. to crawl on our skin and start sucking nightmare. our blood it was a living nightmare and i don't wish this curse on anybody but you must know, like, we also have a biosecurity video. So why did this happen to us? Why would we let this happen to us? We didn't introduce any new birds. This didn't come in on a chicken. We've had the same chickens for a long time. This came from wild birds. We have ravens, sparrows, doves, pigeons here. We even have a big old tree that a bunch of birds live in right here. And it's because we free range our flock. And when you free range your flock, you you take risk of predation, but you also take risk in bio security from wild birds spreading things so that's something we're not going to sacrifice we like to free range our birds but that's the reason this happened to us is because so with life there's a give and a take there's some good and there's some bad and you have to weigh these things and determine what's right for you this wouldn't this didn't happen to our other flock that we have like our babies were raised they're in an enclosed completely secure biosecurity safe run because no little wild birds were allowed to get in there so that flock was safe but here when they're allowed to be with wild birds that's how it happened to us we got it spread from that so yes we know the right biosecurity practices do we practice them all always no we make mistakes too but that's something we sacrifice because we enjoy free-ranging our flocks and that's just what we're gonna have to deal with so now we'll preventatively treat every spring just in case <laughs> this is very much a thing and then like in my latest chicken run build i made sure that everything was blocked off really well so you they wouldn't have sparrows crawling in there and contaminating their flock um spaces they like to hide in is any crevice where wood touches any other piece of wood where anything any, touches any joint, anything because they any joint they any need screw. to hide during the day because it keeps them safe from dehydration and sunlight they're like vampires okay so so my suggestion yeah. would be check those areas specifically at night because you probably won't see any in the daytime but come out they with hide. a flashlight and you'll see them crawling on like your rafters from your coop or your run wherever you're at even your nesting boxes you know lift the material we use nesting pads so it's very easy for us to lift them and look under there but you're going to want to bring a flashlight if you just come out you're not going to see them in the daytime you got to come out really at night bring a flashlight i hope this never happens to anyone i know because we we haven't met anybody that this has happened to it's a relatively new thing i'm reading and this is new and this is here and i don't want to scare anybody but we will be preventatively spraying our chicken runs and every spring with per permethrin we didn't want to feel like we were hiding this from you guys we were just waiting till we had time to film this video because we've been so busy lately traveling and now we're ready to like let you know what happened to us and i hope that if you're finding this video because this has happened to you that this video helps you in some way there is a light at the end of the tunnel 
lots of tears were shed on Arya. Like this was devastating us, but well, from her and I didn't cry. She cried. <laughs> I cried so much, and, and it was just really, really painful to go through this experience. But I uh, loving these birds is worth it, even through all this pain. Like we love our chickens, their pets to us, and we'll do anything for them to keep them safe. And if this is happening to you, I hope this video helps you. I hope this never happens to anybody. It's so devastating. I want to wish this on a worst enemy. We don't know anyone else that this has happened to. We were the um, very unfortunate victims for our coop and our flock, yeah. but we reached out to like our friend Dahlia from her channel Chicken Landia, and we have a video coming up with her. We're going to be doing a collaborative piece with her. So stay tuned for that. We love Dahlia and her channel. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go over there and check it out. Link we'll leave her link her in the channel. description, yeah. actually. Go, go ahead and click on it there. Go say hi to her and then tell yeah. her to come back here and we're going to be doing a video with her. So until then, we'll see you guys next time. We have some other videos for you to enjoy. For the mm -hmm. meantime there, go ahead and click on any of those. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Goodbye.